What's up guys, welcome back to Roots and Refuge Farm. My name is Jess, I'm in my kitchen today. As you can see, my kitchen counter is completely covered with stuff. I have a pretty long to-do list in the kitchen today and I'm gonna show you guys some bits and pieces of that and what a Saturday on our farmhouse looks like. But first, I wanted to let you know that our current merch pre-order is open right now. We just opened it back up. It's gonna be running until November 30th, November 30th, sweet Maya, November 30th. And our hope in cutting this off at November 30th to begin printing and shipping is that these will be in their destination by Christmas. I don't know if international shipping will be able to make it in time. You know, everything is kind of delayed right now, but we are gonna cut it off by November 30th and hoping that that can be the case. So this is all of the new stuff. I've been asked about this bright blue real food comes dirty sweatshirt a lot because it is my current favorite. I've been wearing it and it is available in this pre-order, but also very exciting. This is the first time um, in a very long time that we have had youth sizes. We've been able to open up kid sizes. My kids are so excited. This is something that's been very requested. So the link is down below for that pre-order. Cuts off November 30th. All right, let's get some stuff done. Y'all, today is one of those days that I feel conflict between wanting to create content and that whole real life is kind of a mess thing. Um, I got a bunch of stuff out here. I'm just gonna turn the camera on. The first order of business I have right now is that I am about to start my cream separator and separate out some milk from some cream. So I have my cream separator out. I've just gone through the process of getting it all washed and put together. Um, I found, I'm gonna just go ahead and send you guys to another YouTube channel. There's a channel called Two Guys in a Cooler. And when I was reading about which cream separator I wanted to buy, their video came up and completely sold me on this one because they made such a clear video on how to put it together. And I've now put this together a few times and every time I go back and watch their video. So instead of trying to make one of my own, I'm gonna send you guys the resource that I was learning from. I'll put a link to that down below. Um, I got this, I wanna say it was a couple hundred dollars. Now this is only my, like a few times I've used this. But so far, I really, really like it. I don't have anything to compare it to, but when I was looking for different cream separators, a lot of them were really expensive. And I decided to go ahead and try for maybe like a cheaper option as far as they go. Um, this is like all metal construction and stuff. That was something that I really wanted because it was gonna be used hopefully over the course of a long period of time. I didn't want any plastic breakdown. So I am, I've gotta run a, a cycle of hot water through it and then I'll start with the milk. I've started heating milk up. You have to heat it up to 100 degrees to run it through the cream separator, that helps. So what I'm gonna be doing today is separating this out. The cream will go into jars over here and I'm going to be letting the skim milk run into our big milk tote, which we can collect milk in. And then I can then take that skim milk through the process of turning it into ricotta. And then after that, I will have whey, which that will go to our pigs. The distance is kind of weird here now I think you can adjust this up a little bit more but I don't have a container big enough that can sit on the counter and sit under this so I just put a stool right here next to the counter with my two and a half gallon uh, milk tote in it because I'm gonna be doing a lot of milk today so if... all right this hot water is running through I'm gonna turn this a little bit so you guys I don't know that probably didn't help I have to tell y'all no there so here's a jar of milk it's been in the fridge for a couple of days and the cream rises to the top because obviously milk doesn't come out of a cow homogenized and um, when, it get, when it gets real thick after a few days in the fridge it really sticks to the side of the wall so so I was putting this in the pot to warm it up I was taking my finger and just swiping it around I gotta deal with this it's out of water So I was swiping my finger around the edge just like this to kind of just loosen up this thick cream and make sure I was getting it all when I was pouring it in. Well, Ben was helping me and it was clear he didn't really understand why I was doing that. So I would hand him the jars and he would 
take his little finger and he'd just swipe it all around the inside, like right around the top, like this. Every time I'd hand him one and he just, it was so cute and he was so serious. You know, so often I want to teach my kids, teach them why we do things and like explain. But occasionally when they're doing something so earnestly out of just complete innocent mimicking, I just couldn't do it. I couldn't tell him, hey, this is why I'm doing this. It's already done. You don't have to do it because he was just doing what I was doing. One day he'll learn how to do it properly. But for now, it just blesses my heart to see him do what I do. All right, check that out. So you see how white this milk is coming out? Now, this is, we call this skim milk. Comparing it to at the store, it probably, it, it's more like a 2%. It's still rich, but it's just, it's not, it doesn't have all this butterfat solids. And here is the cream coming out. I don't know if the camera's really gonna convey, but you can really see a color difference between the white here and the yellow here. And this is on winter hay. So in the spring, when the grass is coming in, it will be even more intense because there's a lot more beta carotene at that point in the, the fresh spring grass. Um, and Jersey cows are known for their really yellow cream because they don't convert beta carotene quite the same as some other cows. So a lot of times their, their cream is even more yellow. That's the good stuff right there. So last time when Ben and I did this, we heated up like a massive pot with like four gallons in it or three gallons in it. And it took a long time to get it up to the 100 degrees that I needed it to be at to go through the cream separator. Well, this time I decided since this only holds like a little over half a gallon that I'll do a half gallon to a gallon at a time and it'll heat up a lot faster and I can keep a steady stream going so it's going to be a lot quicker. So every time I talk about using a cream separator, somebody's like, well, why do you need a special tool? Um, you know, just skim it off the top and, and different things. There's actually a lot of butter fat solids within the milk. Even though the cream does separate and rise within the first day and even more so over a couple of days, if you, if you separate through this machine, even milk that's freshly milked, it'll pull all those butter fats out and you end up with more usable cream for making things like sour cream or butter or ice cream, anything you're wanting to make like that. And it is obviously a little more effective to do it this way because you can do a lot of milk at once and you don't have to wait for that to separate. And I think you get more. Because for the instance, these jars, they looked like they had like this much cream on the top, but in running them through, I'm getting significantly more than that. All right, so I just separated about four and a half gallons of milk, some of which I had already skimmed a good bit of the heavy cream off the top that had separated. And I have a little over three quarts of heavy cream off of that. You can change the settings on this if you want it to be like heavy cream or if you want it more like half and half. For me, if I'm going to go through this trouble, I'm just going to do everything heavy cream and then I can always add some milk back to it if I want to make it half and half. Thank you, darling. Now I have about two and a half more gallons, three more gallons, that because this was a busy week, I didn't do anything with it. And this is from like... Mm, maybe like six days ago milking and it's just starting to taste a tiny bit sour now pasteurized milk that you buy at the store um, a lot of the enzymes a lot of the stuff in it has been killed by pasteurization and so it doesn't sour the way raw milk does it actually and it goes rancid so you know that smell when the milk has expired it's gone past the day and like there's no way that you're gonna drink that or do anything with it it's bad but with raw milk, it just starts to sour, and that's where you get sour cream, all of that. Raw milk is not bad when it's sour. Now, you don't necessarily want a big clot of soured cream in your coffee, but sour cream is nice on a baked potato, so it's just, it's gonna be a different application. So I've got this full of my skim milk, and I'm going to put that back in a pot on the stove to separate it out and make a cheese, but I don't really want this soured milk in my ricotta. So at this point, I'm pulling everything aside, and I'm going to start a new thing with the sour milk, and my soured skim here, I'm just going to go ahead and give that to our pigs because I don't have a use for it. You could probably find a use for it, but I just don't need it right now. We we'll obviously have a lot of dairy, but this cream, I'm going to keep separated, and I'm going to make some sour cream out of it. All right, so I'm trading out my milk pail for the pig bucket. We keep a bucket in our 
kitchen at all times. Any scraps, any leftovers, anything goes in it and it goes out to the animals. So we don't have food waste uh, because we are giving this to our meat pigs and they are converting it to meat. The other day when I had this going, my kids got their little cups and they came and they were putting it underneath the fountain of the skim milk and just drinking warm milk out of the fountain. <laughs> kind of funny. All right, so I'm all done. I got almost two quarts of cream that are, they actually don't taste sour to me right now, but I know the milk did a little bit and they're like a little on the older side. So I'm just going to write an S on the top of these so I know that that's the stuff that I'm going to use for the souring stuff. So I'm kind of flying by the seat of my pants here to be completely honest and I'm about to pause and clean up this kitchen because it is a hot mess and it is really difficult to work when you got all of this going on. But I was just thinking about the fact that we are having dinner at our neighbors tonight and I need to take a dessert and I typically just try to plan things that I need to cook around what I have an excess of. Um, I do... I actually want to be better about meal planning and making sure we're getting through things kind of in a uniform pace. We're not eating a whole lot of one thing. Uh, but just the nature of cooking seasonally with what you're harvesting a lot of on your farm, it's just got to be kind of flexible. And right now I've got two and a half gallons of milk to turn into ricotta. I've got a ton of eggs. Um, obviously I've got a lot of cream and I have this bag of blueberries and these were brought to me by a family. Uh, they have a YouTube channel. They're local to us and it was a, a gift that they brought that they had picked these here locally. Uh, Mrazinski Family Homestead and I'll link their channel below but this I've been hanging on to them to do something you know, like wanted to do something good with them. Didn't want to just throw them in a smoothie. I wanted to make something really good. I'm like that sometimes, especially since moving that I haven't had just a ton of fresh local food constantly coming through my kitchen. I've tried to like <laughs> save things, but um, I'm gonna put these with that ricotta and some lemon and maybe use some of a little bit of that slightly soured cream and do a lemon blueberry ricotta pound cake and that's what i'm gonna make for dessert but first i need to clean up this mess Well, my cleaning time lapse wasn't quite as uh, gratifying as I'd hoped because my kids all came in and my camera was set up on a stool and I was feeling pretty sketchy about them zooming all around it. So I took it down. Um, I got things cleaned up. Ben, you wanna say hi? hi? I got things cleaned up well enough to function. I've got one load going in the dishwasher. Um, I'm gonna reload that when it's done and then hand wash the rest of this big stuff. But while I'm waiting, I have everything out and I'm about to start mixing up this pound cake recipe. I will put a link to this recipe down in the description of this video. Um, I just found it on the googly, so. All right, batter's done, minus the blueberries. I'm going to toss these in some flour, which is supposed to help them evenly distribute throughout this batter and not just sink to the bottom. Mom, you're doing it! <laughs> Mix this in. I doubled this recipe to make two loaf cakes because it's gonna be for several people. And the worst that can happen there is that we have leftover cake and I don't think anybody will be complaining about that. Will you complain about leftover cake? No! No. I love cake. I love cake too. So for leftover cake, then the next time we can have cake dessert. That's right. All right, let's put these blueberries in. Or we can have cake oh. for breakfast. Cake for breakfast. Yeah, it's a pound. <laughs> Is a pound cake like acceptable for breakfast? It's yes. It's kind of like a muffin. It doesn't, yes, because it doesn't have icing. All right, got some buttered pans here. Go ahead and put this in. All right, I'm gonna stick these in a 325 degree oven. 
Now I still have to go behind myself and clean up the mess that I just made. So I'm kind of playing around with something and I'm trying to perfect a recipe. And I'm trying to perfect it by Thanksgiving. So Thanksgiving is Sweet Maya's most favorite holiday. It's a really big deal in his family. And one of the things that they all love to enjoy for Thanksgiving is eggnog. Now, I'm not a big fan of eggnog. Um, I'm a big fan of eggnog. Ezra would like you all to know he is a big fan of eggnog. I love and so does Ben, and so do all of our children. They love eggnog, as well as Maya's family. You love eggnog, Noah? Noah loves eggnog. Everybody in Maya's family loves eggnog. Now, we usually purchase this at the store. I have intended many times to like make our Thanksgiving eggnog from scratch, but I've never quite got the recipe just right. So I'm gonna start playing around with it now that I have cream from our house. Before, I've made it with our eggs, but I've never made it with our own cream and milk. And so that's what I'm actually about to do. So it's kind of a trial run today for potentially the Thanksgiving eggnog. And I've just been looking on Google. Um, I'm gonna try a recipe on, from Google today and see how it turns out. But if you have a great eggnog recipe that you like love, please do share it because I would like to have a good starting point and I might still tweak things, but that's what I'm doing next today. Which was my real motivation in doing the cream separating because I needed some heavy cream to make the eggnog. Hey guys, what do you guys think of my eggnog? I want something, I want something in my barrel right now. <laughs> in your barrel right now. <laughs> I want some right here, right now. It's too hot right now, we gotta let it cool off. It's hot. Is not I know it's got to chill, that's what I'm saying. We have to chill it. Well, I can't attest for this recipe on whether it's good or not yet, but I will share the recipe I followed down below, and I'd love your feedback as well. I think this video is probably getting pretty long, so I'm going to say farewell for now. My uh, breads are cooking. Maybe I'll post a picture on Instagram and Facebook once they're done so you guys can see them. Thank you guys for hanging out with me in my kitchen today. I bless you. Until next time. You bless me until next time. <laughs>